So, now that the new Abyssal creatures have been out for a while and it's actually possible to find a free world, I'm going to show you how to AFK all five Abyssal Lords in the world at the same time. What's up guys, before I start this guide, I just want to... I don't really know how I feel about being able to kill the monsters like I do in this video. I mean, I'm AFKing five level 115 Slayer monsters like they're nothing and then they just drop a tier 92 whip it uh it feels strange that this whip just like drops as an item and it doesn't have like there's no whips that are used to make it or anything you, you just like get it as a drop real quick oh, while the copish which is the other like equivalent tier thing you have to kill a ton of the monsters use the keys to kill the magister and then get the drops to make this like it's just so much more difficult to make this weapon than just AFK some monsters real quick and get a tier 92 that's just way better in every way. I mean, they could use the Copish later and upgrade it to like, I don't know, tier 95 or something, but we already have those too. So like, it just feels so weird that this happened. I don't know. What do you guys think? Starting out with the requirements you're going to need, you need 95 plus prayer for soul split and turmoil. You need both of those. And if you have 99 and malevolence, that is a lot better. You're also going to need probably around 112 invention. You can make the potions, the extreme potions to get there, but you want to be able to make like really good perks and also get uh, potion reservoirs and all the stuff like that. You're going to need 115 slayer to even kill these things. And you also are going to want 106 plus herb lore to make uh, elder overloads and 107 lets you make selves. As for quests, you're going to need the Temple at Seniston and the City of Seniston. So uh, obviously guys, this is a really high level thing. And uh, I don't have everything listed here that I have on my account. There's like a lot of archaeology relics and like small little things like that. That you will probably already have by the time you're a high level account to be able to do this. So just uh, keep in mind that there's a lot of other little things you can do to make this work. But as long as you use the right action bar and have this gear, you should be fine. So as far as the inventory and gear setup you're going to want for this, you can see on screen here, this is the absolute minimum gear I was able to get away with. Uh, it seemed pretty consistent. It usually would never get uh, overrun by damage, but occasionally it might. But if you have higher level gear, you could probably start to use things like Cinderbane gloves to get extra poison damage, which is really, really good with the Blood Reaver. But uh, this is the minimum gear, so if you have anything better, definitely uh, use that. And I will say with tier 92 magic, you still don't have 100% accuracy, so potentially a uh, essence of finality could be worth using, but it still costs a lot, so I'm not sure. As for the inventory, it's pretty standard. It just has all the drops in there, you can see, and then just, you know, a cannon spring cleaner, teleport ring to get there, cape. Um, but then it's just uh, Elder Overload Selves and a Weapon Poison. And I use Selves because it pretty much guarantees that you'll always have enough prayer. Uh, I could try it without Selves, but I don't have anything that's not a Selve on this account, I don't think. So for the perks on the weapon, you have a lot of choices for this. Like every single weapon perk is pretty good here. Like Karoming is good, Planted Feet would be good, Aftershock would be good, Ruthless is good, obviously Precise and Equilibrium are good. So like you could mix and match whatever perk combo you want and it'll probably be fine. Karoming probably isn't worth getting until you have a uh, greater chain though. So I probably won't do that. But uh, if you do have greater chain, this is like a crazy method, but this doesn't have greater chain and it works perfectly fine. For the armor perks, it's pretty standard. I would just try to get a uh, demon slayer on something. And uh, I like absorptive four uh, when I AFK stuff. It just makes things way more consistent. Uh, as far as weapons, you could probably get away with a Nox Staff. I used a Staff of Sliske, um, so I assume a Nox Staff would be pretty much the same. The Staff of Slisk splashes a little bit on task, but not very often, and it does perfectly fine. You're usually way ahead in HP, and if you have like any upgrades, you'll be fine even if you just have a Nox Staff. Uh, I'm sure Dual Wields would work the same, Tier 90 or Tier 92, uh, but you'd probably want g Conk if you are using Dual Wields because... Normal Concentrated Blast is just not very good with Revo. 
So moving on to the buffs, you're going to need to do this. So I always like to use some form of penance because it makes it completely AFK and you never have to drink a prayer pot or anything. So you, and you can use the penance powder or the aura depending on which one you like. Uh, the powder is a little expensive, but the aura requires marks of ore to upkeep it. You're also going to need soul split and animate dead and just keep that on the whole time. Probably want it does work with turmoil, but if you have the malevolence prayer, that is a lot better. I think that gives you 100% accuracy. Yeah, at least with tier 92s, it does. You also are going to want the dwarf multi cannon, and you specifically want the auto loading feature from the uh, artisan's workshop, so you never have to refill the cannon. Otherwise, it, it's just not for AFK. It'll eventually run out of cannonballs, and you do use a lot of cannonballs here. This seems to use quite a few. And then the last thing you really need is an Elder Overload of some kind. I use selves, and then I always put them in a Potion Reservoir and have Lantidime Sticks. So it's as AFK as it possibly can be. There are a few things that you don't actually need, but they are really, really good if you have them. The first one is the Ancronia Slayer Helm Stand. This is really strong, obviously. It has the Slayer Helm, and you can use whatever helmet you want, and that lets you use a Cripploom Helmet which is a really cheap piece of Crypt Loom. So that is really, really good. Also, the Helm of the Abyss lets you force an Abyssal Demon task every day, so you can guarantee yourself at least one Abyssal Demon task for free. You should also try to get the 120 Slayer Cape, or at least, you're, well, I mean, you're already going to have the 99. But the Slayer Cape really saves you a lot of points over time. It lets you pick whatever task you want sometimes. So I would definitely get this. And then there's also the dedicated Slayer Aura. This is pretty good here if you're using Penance Powder. I don't know if it's worth it. I usually just reset Penance, but this can help you extend your tasks. So depending on if you're light on Slayer points or not, this could be good. And then you can see on the bottom here, there's this Trophy Takers perk. I tested this and it did not seem to be worth it. So I wouldn't put this on your gear. This is the part of the video where you're supposed to like and subscribe. Wait, what? Oh, my Slayer task is over. Wow. Seven, seven, seven tasks in a row. What is this? All right, guys. So in order to get this work, you just stand here in the middle of the room and you can tell you're in the middle because you're directly in the middle of these two pool things here. So then you just chuck your cannon down there and activate all of your stuff and uh, make sure you're on a Slayer task, because uh, I don't know if this would work off a Slayer task. You definitely need that damage boost. But yeah, just activate all of your buffs, activate Animate Dead, Soul Split, Turmoil, and then you just activate your cannon, and you pretty much just area loot all the stuff. So once you get everything set up, the action part is up on screen now, and this action part seems to work really, really well. So, uh, yeah, you just sit here and area loot. Uh, I would probably have a alt one thing for your Slayer task being over your animate dead and your overload, because without those things, you'll probably die or you don't want to be killing these off task. I mean, the drop rate is terrible off task, but it's actually pretty good on task, it seems. So after this, there is going to be a little test I did with a high tier setup with my main account, and uh, we will see what the results are with that in terms of GP per hour. So now that I showed you the lower level gear setup, here is an example of a really high level setup. This one has cinder banes and still has three pieces of crypt loom. And I'm also trying out this trophy takers perk and also the uh, dedicated slayer aura. I'm going to be using that and seeing how many extra kills that gets me on a slayer task. So I'm starting with 340. Uh, monsters to kill which should be 85 total kills and we will see how many I get by the end of this task. I also haven't tested out this setup so uh, we'll see how it goes and it probably would be better to use a staff I just didn't have one but that would only really matter if you have Magma Tempest. The other perks that I have are Karoming for and Planted Feet and since I have Greater Chain on this account that should be super strong. So we'll see how this goes and I will let you know how many more kills we got and how long it took to kill that many.
So after that task was complete, I ended up getting a total of 58 kills, which would have been 288 task amount. And my starting amount was 340. So obviously the uh, trophy takers perk kind of screwed me over. So I guess that perk is just terrible or, or something. But uh, yeah, don't use that perk, I guess. But uh, it turned out to be around 60 uh, kills in 20 minutes which was 180 kills per hour and that turns out to be around 20 to 22 mil an hour in total loot if you factor in the whip and normal drops so it's not a bad money maker it's also pretty good slayer xp per hour it is around one and a half mil slayer xp an hour base xp rate uh, i think that might have been with the 20 percent from the yak track actually yeah but it's still 1.5 1.25 mil xp per hour which is pretty good slayer xp per hour so if you're trying to get 200 mil make some money afk this is a pretty good task for you thanks for watching guys if you have any other afk guides that you want me to make uh just leave a comment uh thanks for watching i will see you in the next one